This time we're going to be looking in a little more detail at one of those situations where mechanical energy is changed into uh, other forms. Now this one is uh, going to end up being, uh, well, we just looked at this in number 31, that energy is changed into uh, heat energy. Uh, so we, we know that it's friction causing that interaction. Up the top here, we see we're up high, um, velocity is zero, so we've got gravitational potential energy up high, but no kinetic energy from the, the zero speed there. Um, we'll make the assumption that the whole slope that this kid is sliding on is totally frictionless, and then it's only when we get down to the, the level area that we introduce friction, just to keep the, the problem a little bit simpler. Um, and so this kid is going to slide some distance before coming to a stop right here. So velocity is going to be zero there again. Um, so we know that energy has to be conserved in this problem. We just have to figure out where it's gone. Well, that, uh, that energy that this kid is losing can only happen if there is work being done on that kid. And so in that case, we know that the net work done on the kid is equal to the change in energy. Now, before we wrote that as change in kinetic energy, but it can apply more broadly. So our work is going to be done by friction. And that change in energy is going to be uh, equal to the change in uh, well, we can do this a couple of different ways. We can say at this point, the kid would have kinetic energy, and at this point, no kinetic energy. So it could be change in kinetic energy. Or up here, the kid's got gravitational potential energy. Down here, a minimum gravitational potential energy. So we've lost that potential energy there. It's changed into kinetic energy. The uh, amount of energy change is going to be the same no matter which way we look at it. So since we've already got the information about height here, we might as well do change in potential energy from gravity, UG. Uh, <coughs> 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 Excuse me. So the work from friction is going to be equal to the force from friction times the distance times the cosine of the angle between those two. And that's going to be equal to, uh, let's see, mass times gravity times the initial height. And force from friction, we don't have a value there, but we can figure that out. That would be mu times the normal force, and then times the distance times the cosine of the angle between the frictional force and the, um, the displacement vector has to equal mass times gravity times initial height. Now I'm leaving this one just all as variables for now. Um, and we'll see that uh, in just a minute, a lot of this stuff is going to cancel out. So I'm really going to make my calculations easier in just a minute. Uh, in order to finish this one, I need to know what the normal force is. I have mu have the normal force. I'm looking for distance. The angle is going to be 180 degrees because friction points to the left and the kid's moving to the right. Uh, mass is given. Gravity I know. Height initial I know. So the only thing I don't know at this point is normal force. So if I do a quick free body diagram for the kid at the bottom here uh, at this position, got normal force up and weight or mass times gravity downward. So we can see then that the net force has to equal mass times acceleration. In this case, the kid's not moving upward or downward, not accelerating upward or downward once they're down at the bottom here. So then acceleration is going to be zero. So normal force minus mass times gravity has to be zero. So normal force will just be equal to mass times free fall acceleration of gravity. So now I'm going to plug that in. Mu equals uh, normal force was mass times gravity, mg, times d times cosine of theta equals mg times h naught. And you see what happened here? We've got an mg over here and an mg over here. So those 
Um, I'll divide both sides by mass and divide both sides by 9.8 meters uh, per second squared, and those will cancel. So I'm left just with mu times d times cosine theta is equal to h naught. And then to get d all by itself, I'll divide both sides by mu cosine theta. So d is h naught over mu cosine theta. Now I can plug in numbers, and I've, I've simplified this quite a bit. There's not much uh, calculation still to do. So the h naught was 4.5 meters, and mu was 0 0.10. and cosine of 180 degrees. And let's see, the, uh, oh, here, our, our height should be a, uh, a negative value, negative 4.5, because we're going down by 4.5 meters. Um, so that was delta uh, UG, so that actually should be, uh, me, just make a correction here. So this should be height final minus height initial. Oops. Uh, I messed that one up again. There we go. It's not. Okay, so h minus h naught, h minus h naught, there we go. Okay, so this one is really going to be 0 minus 4.5. All right, now that's important, easy mistake to make, especially if you took another physics class where we just said that, uh, you know, that potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Really, we can only use that to find change in potential energy from gravity. Uh, okay, so the change in potential energy from gravity, we, we substitute in there. We've got a negative 4.5 meters divided by 0.1 times cosine of 180 is going to be negative 0.1, and no units on that. And so our distance then is going to be 45 meters. Now it's interesting to note here that uh, in our equation for the distance that this kid travels before he uh, stops sliding, the uh, only thing it depends on is the starting and ending height and the coefficient of friction. So the mass of that kid doesn't affect this problem at all. So that mass was actually extra information that we didn't need. Uh, additionally, we don't have any inf information about the, the angle for this hill, uh, some angle theta there. We don't need that. All we need is this initial height to figure out that the kid slides 45 meters.